What's up guys, S1 Hoon got my glasses. What's up guys, we're in New York, it's the last day but I'm gonna film you a little tutorial. This is a devastating, super convincing triumph flip that I use all the time and you're getting the inside scoop on that. I've realized that my camera is at an angle and so I look on the wall, so I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna look down at the mechanics and the trick and as always guys, welcome back to basics. <laughs> beginning of the video this is a devastating triumph flip now for those of you who do not know what a triumph routine is and this is your first triumph trick a triumph is basically where the cards are mixed face up and face down and then through magical process the cards are all self-righted except for one card which is the spectators card now there are a load of different variations of triumphs out there um, when they involve like cutting packets on the table and turning them over I think this is just like a super simple one it's impromptu, you can do it with a borrowed deck, you can do it standing up or sitting down, uh, and it's very adaptable and tailoring. So let's have a look at how that trick looks. So for this trick, the magician will allow the spectator to freely select any card of their choosing. The card is then placed in the center of the deck and shuffled, and for good measure, it's shuffled once again. Now the cards are turned back and forth, over and over again, mixing them face up and face down, so they are truly, well and truly mixed. We show the spectator that some are face to back, some are back to face, and some are back to back. But just like that, the cards are all now the right way round, except from one card, which was the spectator's card, the Ten of Cups. And that is how you do try and flip. So now we know what the trick looks like, let's get the camera face down and let's look at the mechanics on how we do this. Okay, so this routine only requires one slight hand move and that is a control to either the top or the bottom. To streamline the trick, you can just control this card to the bottom of the deck and skip out one of the phases. However, what I like to do is I like to do this shuffle, this overhand shuffle, because it appears a lot more convincing to the spectator. So I'll show you how it's done. So we're going to let the spectator freely select any card they so wish, because this is a truly impromptu trick. So we've got the eight of spades. You can get to sign it, you can do whatever you want with the card, and you're going to return it into the deck, and you're going to control it to the top of the deck. So for this, we're just going to use a double undercut. So we put the card in, and cut some cards like this, and now the card's on top. From here, we're going to do an overhand shuffle. Now I talked this on an early episode, and what you're going to do is you're going to pull off their card and then start shuffling the rest of the cards on top. So their card is now on the bottom, and you can retain that stock and just keep shuffling over and over again. So I'm going to show you that with the card face up so you can see where it is. So we're going to put the card into the centre of the deck, we square up, we double undercut to the top, we then take the card off and we shuffle loads of cards on top and we can keep continuing to shuffle as long as we retain their card on the bottom. From here, this is a principle that I really love and I use this when I do Out of This World. It's a good way to get set up into it. And what you could, or it's a good way if you as well, if you just want to sort through the cards very quickly and you want to have all the cards that are facing one way, facing another way. I'll show you, I'll show you the principle that makes sense in practice rather than just speaking. So what you're going to do is you're going to push off as many cards as you like, it doesn't really matter, and you're going to turn them over like this. You're going to push off some more and turn it back and you're going to keep going back and forward pushing cards off like this until you get to the very last card which is their card you turn the deck over and you put their card on top okay so i'll show you this one more time so you're going to push some cards off turn them over and what's good here as well is this turn back and forth like this, not to keep going 180, 180. The constant back and forth motion kind of in the spectator's mind makes them believe that it really is mixed face up and face down. So you get to the last card, you place that on top. Now what it looks like is that to the spectator, all the cards are mixed, but to spread them, you'll see. All of the face up cards are in this part of the deck, and all these cards down here a face down, set from the spectator selection, which is on the top of the deck. And you're going to do a convincer here. It's worth noting that prior to doing this trick, you sort of bend and bevel your cards, so you get this natural break in the center. And I'll show you why that comes in handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a cut from the top 10 to 20 cards. 
and we're going to turn around and show the spectre like this and you're doing a wrist kill action here so you're rot rotating the wrist out you pick up the pack you rotate out and you're going to show me you've got face down to, f to back you go oh, we'll cut again somewhere we've got some that are back to face down you put the cards back on now for the third cut that we're going to do you're going to pick up at that break that natural break where the cards are beveled so you can see that here there's a thick dark line where there's a gap right there okay so you're going to do you pick up at that point where the cards are beveled you turn over you say you've got some back to back now normally you would put the cards back on like this but for this action you're just going to drop them on top now a lot of people think that that's going to draw a lot of attention because you're not putting them back in the same place I have performed this hundreds of times no one even notices that small slide. And what you've essentially done now is put all the face down cards face down except from one card, their card. I'll show you the breaks one more time. So you're gonna do three breaks, one above that bevel, and you're gonna show it face to back. You're gonna break from the bottom of the pack and show back to face. And then if you push, you can sort of get that, it'll bounce back and you can naturally grab that break here. Show back to back, chuck the cards on top, put the cards down, the entire trick is done at this point, the rest is patter, you spread the cards, and obviously the only card face up is their card. So all in good knowing the trick, it's all about the patter that goes with it. So here on this channel, we don't just give you a trick to learn, we give you a lot of patter alongside that. We give you the basics so that you can go forward and perform this. So here, this is the pattern that I like to use when I'm doing the trick. So say to spectator, select any cards you like. I always think like I'm a jokey magician. So when they go to take a card, any card, they go to pick it, say, oh no, no, not that one, I need that one. And then they, they pause, and they go, no, I'm just joking, you can take any card. So they're gonna take a card out. It's gonna be the Ace of Spades. We're gonna have them sign it, whatever. I return it back to the deck, and I say, okay, you see normal magic tricks. Now at this point, the card is fully sticking out of the back. They can't see this. And this is about time misdirection. So I could go straight into doing a double undercut, but then it looks like I've done something with the card. So what I do is have the card stick at the back, and I sort of hold the cards quite loosely. And I say to them, right, so you've seen, probably seen a lot of magic tricks where magicians sort of conjure up cards and disappear cards. We're gonna do something a little bit different. And, um, you know, I think those tricks are quite easy, so I want to do something difficult for you guys. This is when I swap hands, I now create a break, and I do a double undercut. I say, right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to really mix up these cards. I'm going to make it really hard to try and find your card. So the first stage is just shuffling it. And we're just going to shuffle your cards, lose it entirely. Now at this point as well, I might say to them, now magicians are quite good at uh, tracking shuffling. So to make it a lot harder for myself, I'm going to mix up the cards a different way. And this justifies this action of doing the cards face to back. And you should see it because they really then think, oh, actually what's happened here? And again, we've had a lot of time misdirection here. So they're not they're not able to follow the process of where the card has gone yet. Now we're at this stage. I say, okay, now these cards are really mixed up. Look, if you have a look, some of them are face to back. Some of them I think are like back to face, there we go. And if I can cut it just right, and I like this point of, if I can cut it just right and I look at the deck, because it makes it look like I'm looking for something like a, uh, if I can just cut it right, yeah, there you go. Look, I can find some that are back to back. So these are really mixed up. And that gives a little bit more time to misdirection for me to put the cards back on top the opposite way around. From this point onwards, I put the cards down. All the spectator really has seen is me shuffle up the cards. They haven't seen me do any sleight of hand and the pattern the time misdirection has allowed that to happen. Now the cards are on the table or if we're not in a table environment, I can sort of, I can put them in their hand, I can let them hold on to them. It doesn't really matter. Now the magic's done. And at this point, like I said, it's all pattern. So at this point I might say, okay, so the cards are really, really messed up, like ridiculously messed up. Now it would be, you know, it'd be really impossible, wouldn't it now, for the cards which are in your hand to all be the right way around, except from one card, which was your card. And at this point, I don't even know what your card is. So for the first time, do you want to tell us what your card is? And they might say, the Ace of Spades. And then you go, okay, we'll spread through the cards, or we spread them on the table, and there's obviously, one card, there we go, there's one card, and that is the Ace of Spades. Okay guys, so I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure you give it a like. You are subscribed, you comment down below, and you check out my Instagram, New York Bagels, man. What I'm saying, I'm literally turning into a carbohydrate. And um, yeah. No seriousness though guys, um, I really hope you have enjoyed this trick and it's something that you use in your arsenal. I think it's a really great, simple, easy to do triumph trick that is very hands off in a sense. You do the, the slide, you do a couple of shuffles, you put it down. So you make it look like the deck is really mixed up. The magic's done very quick, it's in their hand. 
you can leave it, you can put it on the table, you can talk to them for a bit, a bit of time with direction, and then you can then do the reveal however you wish. And it's a very devastating trick. And a lot of people go, oh, they're not sort of expecting that to happen. They don't expect the cards to be the right way up, let alone the cards to be, their card to be face up. And like I said, you can use this as um, a way to get into Out of This World by Paul Harris. And the simplicity of that is the same way as what you were doing before, but you push it along um, and every time, so you do it sort of cards face up and you put blacks one way and reds the other and you just go back and forwards between the black and the reds and you can separate them all out. Far easier than having to sit there and deal them out. I think that's just a much more, it's a simple principle and we like principles and we like simple things and there's a bagel set in front of me that I just want to keep eating so I'm going to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Check it out on the next one or whatever. I've got some vlogs coming up about New York. I've enjoyed my time here. We're going for breakfast. See you later. Bye. Take a bite of the bagel. In the mouth. I'm quite a, I feel like I'm quite a jokey comedian. I always say comedian. No, no seriousness. Yeah, no seriousness.